from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, April the 26th, 2018. The man said to be responsible for the vandalism of a Jewish cemetery last year has been arrested. 34-year-old Alzado Harris was arrested at his home after police matched DNA found in a jacket left at the scene of Chesed Shelemet Cemetery in St. Louis, Missouri, where in February of 2017 over 100 headstones were toppled over. The St. Louis Dispatch reported that Harris, who has a criminal record, confessed to police after his arrest. He faces up to seven years in prison for a charge of institutional vandalism. He is not being charged with a bias or hate crime. University City Police explained in a statement that there is no evidence to indicate the incident was racially, ethnically, or religiously motivated. They said he acted alone, was angry over a personal matter, and was under the influence of drugs when he committed the offense. It appears that the Czech Republic will be the next country to move its embassy to Jerusalem. President Milos Zeman said he will appoint an honorary consul in the city, which will be the first step in a three-step process to relocate the embassy. The Czech Foreign Ministry released a statement confirming that first step and a second step, a Czech cultural center to be built, they said, specifying in West Jerusalem. The third stage presumably would be the moving of the embassy for which there was no date given. The statement added that this step in no way prejudges the final agreement concerning Jerusalem. The Czech Republic fully respects common policy of the European Union, which considers Jerusalem as the future capital of both the state of Israel and the future state of Palestine. Zeman, as president, it should be noted, has limited executive power, and it is ultimately up to the Czech government to approve the embassy move. Zeman made the announcement yesterday at an event in honor of Israel's 70th Independence Day at Prague Castle, which was also attended by Israel's Deputy Foreign Minister Tsipi Khatoveli. Israeli search and rescue teams are working diligently tonight after a rare, deadly storm struck southern Israel yesterday. Flash floods swept away a group of high school students who were on a field trip near the Dead Sea. Fifteen of the students were recovered safely, but nine other students who were found in critical condition have now been pronounced dead. One student was still missing. When the floods initially struck yesterday, there were two fatalities, a teenage Bedouin boy and a Palestinian teenage girl. Molotov cocktails were thrown at an IDF post overnight last night in the West Bank. The IDF spokesperson wrote on social media that soldiers who were stationed at the post near the city of Hebron identified the suspects and fired shots towards them. The suspects fled. There were no injuries reported. Israel's Channel 10 reports that incoming U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo could visit Israel as early as next week. The report said this would be part of Pompeo's first trip abroad in his new post. Pompeo, who was set to be confirmed by the U.S. Senate today, has plans to fly to Brussels tomorrow, Friday, for a NATO foreign minister's summit. An unnamed senior Israeli official told Channel 10 that after that stop in Brussels, Pompeo will visit several other countries, including Israel. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley condemned terror group Hamas today for sending children to the security fence with Israel, putting them in danger. Haley was addressing a U.N. Security Council meeting about the ongoing situation at the Gaza security fence. She said anyone who truly cares about children in Gaza should insist that Hamas immediately stop using children as cannon fodder in its conflict with Israel. On Tuesday, U.S. Special Representative for International Negotiations Jason Greenblatt also condemned Hamas for inciting violence at the fence and condemned the Palestinian Authority for continuing its support of terrorism. Greenblatt was speaking at the American Jewish Committee's Women's Leadership Board Spring Luncheon, where he also expressed hope and support from the U.S. for a peace deal with the Palestinians. But he said that was up to the parties themselves to negotiate and reach an accord.
Well, Israel's Knesset is looking for a new rabbi, and for the first time, the position is open to women. Current Knesset Rabbi Alexander Hockman retires in a few months, and the Israeli parliament published a tender for his replacement. It originally said that applicants had to present a rabbinical certificate from the chief rabbinate, which excluded women as they are barred from the chief rabbinate certification exams. However, several groups, including the Israel Religious Action Center, made their opposition known, claiming the tender was discriminatory, and that prerequisite has now been withdrawn. The new requirements will only include a bachelor's degree and a certificate of kashrut, or kosher, supervision which would for the first time make the Knesset rabbi position attainable to women. The attorney for the Religious Action Center said this is a breakthrough, hearkening additional rabbinical and halakhic positions becoming available to women. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, April the 26th. At 7 and 7.30, it's Talmud Study with Rabbi Mordechai Becker. At 8, a look at Israeli and American Jews. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Jack Laub on L'Chaim. And at 10, Jewish educator Avraham Infeld talks about the complexities inherent in the idea of Israel as a Jewish state from Limud 2018 in Princeton, New Jersey. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, I will speak with the director of the American Jewish Committee's office in Berlin, Deidre Berger, about recent anti-Semitism there and the Kippah March yesterday, where thousands of Jews and non-Jews in Germany showed their solidarity for the Jewish community on the streets of Berlin and other cities. That's on tonight's In the News. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, April the 26th, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.